cannot protect the environment unless you empower people, you inform them, and you help them understand that these resources are their own, that they must protect them. When we plant trees, we plant the seeds of peace and seeds of hope. In the course of history, there comes a time when humanity is called to shift to a new level of consciousness, to reach a higher moral ground. A time when we have to shed our fear and give hope to each other. That time is now. You can make a lot of speeches, but the real thing is when you dig a hole, plant a tree, give it water, and make it survive. That's what makes the difference. You cannot enslave a mind that knows itself. That values itself. That understands itself. No matter who or where we are, or what our capabilities, we are called to do the best we can. Every one of us can make a contribution. And quite often we are looking for the big things and forget that, wherever we are, we can make a contribution. Sometimes I tell myself, I may only be planting a tree here, but just imagine what's happening if there are billions of people out there doing something. Just imagine the power of what we can do. Recognizing that sustainable development, democracy and peace are indivisible is an idea whose time has come. Today we are faced with a challenge that calls for a shift in our thinking, so that humanity stops threatening its life support system. We are called to assist the earth to heal her wounds and in the process heal our own, indeed, to embrace the whole of creation in all its diversity, beauty and wonder. We can love ourselves by loving the earth. It's the little things citizens do. That's what will make the difference. My little thing is planting trees. Human rights are not things that are put on the table for people to enjoy. These are things you fight for and then you protect. Education, if it means anything, should not take people away from the land, but instill in them even more respect for it, because educated people are in a position to understand what is being lost. The future of the planet concerns all of us, and all of us should do what we can to protect it. As I told the foresters, and the women, you don't need a diploma to plant a tree. When you know who you are you are free. We all share one planet and are one humanity, there is no escaping this reality. What a friend we have in a tree, the tree is the symbol of hope, self-improvement and what people can do for themselves. We owe it to ourselves and to the next generation to conserve the environment so that we can bequeath our children a sustainable world that benefits all. We are called to assist the earth to heal her wounds and in the process heal our own, indeed, to embrace the whole creation in all its diversity, beauty, and wonder. This will happen if we see the need to revive our sense of belonging to a larger family of life, with which we have shared our evolutionary process. That's the way I do things when I want to celebrate, I always plant a tree. We cannot tire or give up. We owe it to the present and future generations of all species to rise up and walk. We need to promote development that does not destroy our environment. Every person who has ever achieved anything has been knocked down many times. But all of them picked themselves up and kept going, and that is what I have always tried to do. I think some of these solutions are prepared in an office without a full understanding of the local situation. Disempowerment, whether defined in terms of a lack of self-confidence, apathy, fear, or an inability to take charge of one's own life, is perhaps the most unrecognized problem in Africa today. If you make mistakes that is all right because we all make mistakes, and we learn from those mistakes. You gain confidence from learning, failing, and rising again. The little grassroots people can change this world. The living conditions of the poor must be improved if we really want to save our environment. 
Sometimes we become bound by other people's thoughts because we are not sure about ourselves. African women in general need to know that it's okay for them to be the way they are, to see the way they are as a strength, and to be liberated from fear and from silence. I don't really know why I care so much. I just have something inside me that tells me that there is a problem, and I have got to do something about it. I think that is what I would call the God in me. It's a matter of life and death for this country. The Kenyan forests are facing extinction and it is a man-made problem. It is very important for young people not to be afraid of engaging in areas that are not common to the youth. Get involved in local activities, get involved in local initiatives, be involved in leadership positions because you can't learn unless you are involved. And if you make mistakes that is alright too because we all make mistakes and we learn from those mistakes. You gain confidence from learning, failing and rising again. Unfortunately, the issues of climate change, unlike many other issues, are very subtle because the changes we observe are very, very subtle. We tend to put the environment last because we think the first thing we have to do is eliminate poverty. But you can't reduce poverty in a vacuum. You are doing it in an environment. I'm very conscious of the fact that you can't do it alone. It's teamwork. When you do it alone you run the risk that when you are no longer there nobody else will do it. I stand before you and the world humbled by this recognition and uplifted by the honor of being the 2004 Nobel Peace Laureate. As the first African woman to receive this prize, I accept it on behalf of the people of Kenya and Africa, and indeed the world. I am especially mindful of women and the girl child. I hope it will encourage them to raise their voices and take more space for leadership. I want to do the right things, I want to plant trees, I want to make sure that the indigenous forests are protected because I know, whatever happens, these are the forests that contain biodiversity, these are the forests that help us retain water when it rains and keep our rivers flowing, these are the forests that many future generations will need. There are opportunities even in the most difficult moments. Until you dig a hole, you plant a tree, you water it and make it survive, you haven't done a thing. You are just talking. We can work together for a better world with men and women of goodwill, those who radiate the intrinsic goodness of humankind. To do so effectively, the world needs a global ethic with values which give meaning to life experiences and, more than religious institutions and dogmas, sustain the non-material dimension of humanity. Mankind's universal values of love, compassion, solidarity, caring and tolerance should form the basis for this global ethic which should permeate culture, politics, trade, religion, and philosophy. It should also permeate the extended family of the United Nations. It is evident that many wars are fought over resources which are now becoming increasingly scarce. If we conserved our resources better, fighting over them would not occur. Protecting the global environment is directly related to securing peace. Those of us who understand the complex concept of the environment have the burden to act. We must not tire, we must not give up, we must persist. Those of us who have been privileged to receive education, skills, and experiences and even power must be role models for the next generation of leadership. Culture is coded wisdom. What people see as fearlessness is really persistence. Because I am focused on the solution, I don't see the danger. The people are learning that you cannot leave decisions only to leaders. Local groups have to create the political will for change, rather than waiting for others to do things for them. That is where positive, and sustainable, change begins. Passion begins with a burden and a split-second moment when you understand something like never before. That burden is on those who know. Those who don't know are at peace. Those of us who do know get disturbed and are forced to take action. 
Those of us who witness the degraded state of the environment and the suffering that comes with it cannot afford to be complacent. We continue to be restless. If we really carry the burden, we are driven to action. We cannot tire or give up. We owe it to the present and future generations of all species to rise up and walk. Nobody in the world is completely dependent on another person, but we are all interdependent. Using trees as a symbol of peace is in keeping with a widespread African tradition. For example, the elders of the Kikuyu carried a staff from the figgy tree that, when placed between two disputing sides, caused them to stop fighting and seek reconciliation. Many communities in Africa have these traditions. We have a responsibility to protect the rights of generations, of all species, which cannot speak for themselves today. The global challenge of climate change requires that we ask no less of our leaders, or ourselves. I have always felt that perhaps women have sometimes almost embraced the same values as men, and the same character as men, because they are in the men's world, and they are trying to fit into a system that men have created. And maybe in truth when there is a critical mass of women who play that role in governments, then we will see whether women can really manage power in a way that is less destructive than the way that men have used power. In a few decades, the relationship between the environment, resources, and conflict may seem almost as obvious as the connection we see today between human rights, democracy and peace. All of us have a God in us, and that God is the spirit that unites all life, everything that is on this planet. Which quote did you like the most? Share your opinion in the comments below. Subscribe and don't miss out the chance to see the next video.